Thank you for watching Hack the File. I'm Michael Lopez, and today we're going to finish up, um, I think it's Chapter 8, um, Scanning Targets of the Ethical Hacking Book Series. Enjoy. All right, so we left off um, running this mass scan and then reading the XML file. So now we're going to do reading banner information and we're going to learn a little bit about that. So let's just jump into it. Mass scan can also uh, open a TCP connection on a port and download banners. Banners information that normally includes details about the application running on that port. Now, uh, as we're reading this, I'm going to get all my uh, stuff started again. For example, the banner might include the application's version. This is extremely useful because as soon as a company discloses a known vulnerability in some software, a powerful machine running mass scan can identify all internet facing vulnerable machines in less than 10 minutes. For example, Servers running older versions of OpenSSL library are vulnerable to an attack called Heartbleed. In Chapter 9, we'll, we'll examine the details of Heartbleed, which can allow hackers to read a server's memory. For now, let's see how hackers might use MassScan to detect all the machines on the internet that are vulnerable to attack. Earlier I mentioned that MassScan used its own custom TCP IP implementation. Although this implementation works seamlessly for scanning, it conflicts with an operating system's TCP IP implementation when it attempts to establish a TCP connection and download a banner. You can circumvent this by using the uh, source IP option to assign a unique network ID to the packet's mass scan sends. Mass scan sends. Carefully select this IP address to ensure that it's unique on the network so that IP packets are forwarded to another machine. Well, how are we supposed to know? Do I got to Google that and um, used IP addresses? <laughs> that is hardly source. Let me, let me just skip ahead and then we'll come back to this if you want to. Here we've specified the range of IP addresses to scan using CIDR notation. Next we select the we select the port to check. So port 443. In this case we're checking port 443, which is associated with HTTPS protocol. We then need to inspect the banners, uh, banner for the OpenSSL. Heartbleed, oh wait, OpenSSL version numbers associated with the Heartbleed vulnerability. Simultaneously establishing multiple TCP connections can cause conflict between MassCAN's TCP IP stack and that of operating systems. So we label outgoing packets with a new source IP address not used by any other machines on the network to avoid conflict. So maybe we could use that same IP address that he's using up there. We should see the following output. Starting mass scan, force option, 
initiate a missile in stealth scan scanning 256 hosts one port one host discovered open port 443 TCP of this IP banner on port 443 TCP uh, that SSL TLS PF Sense 5 Banner on port TCP Vuln S Heartbeat. Hmm. The scan detected the port 443 is open on one host and that the machine might be running a vulnerability version of OpenSSL. So I'm assuming that that's uh, the PF Sense, his PF Sense. <laughs> You'll need to follow some extra steps if you decide to run this scan outside your virtual test environment. Especially if you're running the scan over Wi-Fi. In particular, you'll need to prevent your operating system from interfering by blocking the port that mass scan uses with a firewall. On Linux, the IP table program allows editing of firewall rules. Run the following command to create a new rule. This rule drops all incoming packets associated with the GSP protocol on port 3000. I discussed far I discuss firewalls in more detail in chapter 16. For additional nuances on mass scan, read the mass scan documentation. And we can just do this. Oh, this. Oh, there you go. I've got this. Uh, if I need to reference it, I got it on my favorites. All right, so I think we're done with mass scan. I'm not going to do this. Just because uh, I don't want to, I don't think it's too beneficial. We already ran something on mass scan. If you want to run this, pause it, run that. Um, it's just looking at the banners and see if they have a uh, vulnerability in it. The TCP port. We're gonna we're just gonna skip that and we're gonna go to Shodan next. I think Shodan is something that we need to learn about. Uh, we already did some stuff on mass scan, so you can pause it, you can run all this stuff, read it if you want. Uh, I recommend doing it if you want, but I'm gonna move on. So Shodan, like Google, hold on, let me get everything else running. Shodan, like Google, Shodan is a search engine, but unlike Google, which searches for web pages, Shodan searches for active IP addresses. When it finds one, it collects as much information about that device as it can, including information on the device's operating system, open ports, software versions, and location. Shodan catalogs this information and makes it searchable through a web page and Python API. So when hackers and security researchers discover a software vulnerability, they can use Shodan to find vulnerable devices. For example, the following search query returns an Apache version 2.4.4.6, I mean 4.6, web servers that support HTTPS. Show figure 87 shows the redacted results of running the query of Shodan. Shodan also supports several filters for refining the search results. For example, the OS filter limits the results to include only certain operating systems, and the city filter limits results to machines in a specific city. The following search query returns Linux servers in Charlottesville, Virginia, that run Apache and support HTTPS OS, Linux, 
City, Charlottesville, Apache to Olympias. You can find a list of showdown filters at let's go right here, GitHub Showdown Filters. There's all the showdown filters. And you guys can mess with this. But you can always register with your ProtonMail account. Shodan allows only registered users to run filtered quitters. But you can always register with your ProtonMail account. However, there is a downside to using Shodan. Shodan. It logs your IP address every time you query Shodan. This is bad because Shodan now knows your IP address and who you're scanning. Thus, it might be better to set up your own scanning machine. In Chapter 16, I'll show you how to set up such an anomalous hacking environment. Now let's discuss some limitations of current scanning methods. Alright, we're going to mess with Shodan. Shodan! What I'm going to do first is I'm going to um, what the heck? Yeah, run that. I'm going to hook get onto my uh, private VPN first. Hopefully that scrambles my IP address up enough to where it doesn't list it when I go on showdown um, all right I got my um, got my VPN up so let's get on showdown now um, I would recommend everybody uh, get a VPN right and they're cheap relatively cheap I think I paid for the one that I have I think I paid a uh, hundred bucks for three years or something like that and I like it. it's a good uh, VPN it's good for all kinds of stuff streaming whatever and um, they're just cool things you know they 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 give you a different IP address and allow you to uh, you know stay relatively um, secret right so hopefully when I log on the show Dan it'll uh, register that servers IP address instead of mine right that's how I think it should work so We'll see. I'm going to look up Shodan. And it's Shodan IO. So here is the website Shodan IO. I've already got it saved on my favorites. So I've messed with this a little bit. Um, let's see what it says. Actually, I, I might want to register. So, oh, I think I'm already registered. Let's see. So, all right, let's see if we can put two of these together. So, we're going to go city. Here's an example. So, city San Diego, right? I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go, uh, Enter this. We're gonna do um, let's do SSH service, which is port twenty two. Let's see if that works. There you go. So in LA. These are all the devices with port 22 open or vulnerable, right? Let's just 
34,000. Here's the, you know, different IP addresses and stuff or whatever. Um, I mean, you guys can mess with this and Shodan is pretty cool. The searches banners, which is basically uh, the HTML code. So, I mean, we can go to Shodan search query fundamentals, right? And so here's the banner, right? So this is HTML, this is HTML code that runs their website. They're going to have all this stuff. So what I guess what Shodan's doing is it's, it's speaking with the web services and it's gathering this information. Um, the information for each service is stored in an object called the banner. What is the fundamental unit of data that show, show? Okay, so this is important. The banner. Devices run services, and those services are what Shodan collects information about. For example, websites are hosted on devices that run a web service, and Shodan would gather information by speaking with that web service. The information for each service is stored in an object called the banner. <coughs> it is the fundamental unit of data that Shodan gathers and what you'll be searching for. A simplified banner looks like this. It's got five different properties. By default, only the data pro uh, property is searched by Shodan. The contents of the data property can vary greatly depending on the type of services. For example, here is a typical HTTP banner. Let's look again at the simplified banner Moxa, Moxa devices. Here's how the filters work. So now you know what a banner is. Now you know what Shodan does. It's a very powerful tool. Um, get on there and mess with it. Um, I would imagine you could get into a lot of trouble uh, playing with Shodan out in the wild. And uh, Shodan mixed with um, other websites and knowledge could get in even more trouble. Um, you know, it just depends you know how curious you are but we don't want to get in trouble so make sure you do all this on your uh, secure environment all right anyways so uh ipv6 and nat limitations internet scanners are enabled to scan private ip ranges behind routers that implement a system called network address translation nat Okay, hold on. Internet scanners are unable to scan private IP ranges behind routers that implement a system called network address translation, NAT. This means that often the only devices that show up on public scans are public devices like cable modems and Wi-Fi routers. To understand NAT and how it affects scanning, we must first discuss the limitations of IP4. Internet protocols version 6 IP6. So far I've discussed scanning the scanning the approximately 4 billion possible IP addresses in IP4. However, there are approximately 8 billion people on earth, some who have multiple devices like phones, laptops, game consoles, and IoT devices. There are approximately 50 billion internet connected devices. 4 billion addresses is not enough. 
Two solutions were proposed to deal with this problem. First was to share a single IP address between multiple people using NAT. And the second was to create a new version of IP called Internet Protocol 6 that contains a larger number of possible addresses. The designers of IP6 propose allocating more bits to each IP address. Instead of using 34 IP4 addresses, IP6 addresses are 128 bits long. I said 34, 32. Which increases the number of possible IP addresses from 4 billion to 2 and 1 to the power of 128. Or 340 unit decillion, uh, undecillion, one trillion multiplied by itself three times. Unlike IP4 addresses, for which 8 bit segments are represented by a decimal number between 0 and 255, IP6 addresses are <coughs> represented as hexadecimal numbers. <coughs> Each which represents the 8-bit sequence. IP6 addresses are commonly written as 8 pairs of hexadecimal numbers separated by colons. Following is an example IP6 address. Because IP6 search space is so large, tools like MassCan can't scan every IP address. You might be wondering why machines still use IP4 if new standards exist. Switching to IP6 requires updating the NICs and routers in the network. So until infrastructure is updated, several systems will need to main be maintained backwards compatibility. 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 <laughs> NAT. Because we can't instantaneously upgrade all the equipment in the network to IP6. Home Wi-Fi routers use NAT to allow all devices in the home to share one single IP address. For example, consider the small home network depicted in figure 8.8 consisting of laptop mobile phone. The cable modem is assigned to a single IP address by the ISP and it shares that address with the Wi-Fi router. The cable modem and router are bundled to single devices in the home. Okay, hold on. The cable modem is assigned a single IP address by the ISP. Yeah, that's right. And it, sh and it shares the address with the Wi Fi router. The router then creates its own internet LAN that contains IP addresses and private IP range. Um. These IP addresses are completely internal and will never be seen by an external network. A Wi-Fi router must also map those internal IP addresses to a single IP address. How is this possible? The router manages the mapping using port numbers. For example, the laptop may be mapped to the external IP address of port 1, whereas the mobile device may be mapped to the same external IP address of port 2. But remember that network communication occurs between processes and each device, like the laptop and the phone, may be running multiple processes. Thus the devices might need multiple ports through which to make the connection. We can solve this problem by assigning a unique port to each process. For example, the process running on port 562 on the laptop with IP addresses 101 might be assigned to external addresses 53 on port 8002, whereas the game running on port 542 on the laptop is assigned to port 5002 on the same external address. The table that keeps track of these assignments is called a NAT table. You can see an example of this kind of mapping in figure 89. When the packet leaves the internal network, the source IP is replaced with an entry in the NAT table, making it appear as though all traffic is coming from a single IP address running multiple processes. 
There's your source IP port. Source IP port. If a packet arrives at the mo at the motor map uh, 155 on port 8002, the modem will forward it to the router, which then will replace destination address with the corresponding private address. That also prevents scanning services like MassScan from directly connecting to the devices connected to the router that implement NAT. This is why we designed the reverse shell in Chapter 4. It initiated the connection to the server and not the other way around. Huh. Vulnerability databases. Vulnerability databases contain collections of known vulnerabilities. As I've discussed, once a hacker uses OSINT techniques to learn about a victim's system, they can search vulnerability databases for a way to access those systems. A popular vulnerability databases is Exploit Database. I'm going to click on it. I've already got that now. That's the, the main one. Which contains information on vulnerabilities. We can pause it, get that. And instructions on how to exploit them. Figure 8. 10 shows its interface. I already know what it looks like. In addition, NIST maintains the National Vulnerability Database. I like that one too. And I've got this one. Oh, I don't got that one. Tagged. Oh, there, pause it and get that. NIST also provides feeds that allow ethical hackers to get updates with new vulnerabilities that are discovered. The database is synced with the common vulnerabilities and exposures database maintained by MITRE. Figure 811 shows a CVE database entry on an Apache vulnerability. CVE's entries follow a particular naming structure. CVE blah, blah 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 where YYYY represents the year and 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 is the unique ID unique number assigned to the vulnerability these tools these tools can do damage in the wrong hands for example an attacker may receive a NVD update about a new CVE vulnerability and then search Shodan for devices running with that see there you go that's a good example on how you can use Shodan and all this stuff together. This scenario isn't just hypothetical. In October 2020, the, the NSA released top CVE vulnerabilities exploited by one particular state actor. Researcher, researchers will continue to discover new vulnerabilities and new lists of preferred vulnerabilities will emerge, so the cycle will continue. This is why it is so important to keep your system updated and patched. You can also search these databases from Kali Linux command line by running the following. Yeah, search exploit. For example, the following search shows the result of running a search exploit query on Apache 2.0. Let's do that one. Search exploit Apache 2.4. All right, let's do it. I forgot you could do this on uh, your Kelly box. You could do anything on your Kelly box.
Apache PHP. Whoa. Apache. What was all? Each, each entry contains the name of the vulnerability and the path to a script that a hacker can, can use to exploit it. The path to the script. PHP remote. There's the path. Oh, PHP remote.py. Hmm. Awesome. Each entry contains the name of the vulnerability and the path of the script the hacker used to exploit it. You can view the exploitation script by using the P flag, followed by the unique number that identifies the exploit. Each exploit file is named using a unique number. For example, the second remote code exploits is named to something something.py so we can view information on the file that implements the exploit by using the following command. Search exploit P29316. Uh, now, I'm going to do this, right? I'm going to say... <laughs> vulnerability databases All right so I want to go here <laughs> Vuln database go in here Instructions. Not text. I'm going to say run. Run command. Search point. Um, exploit. Search on the what database? Is it the exploit database? Then we'll go here. I guess it searches all the databases.
So let's go here. And I guess the number is this number. Oh, wait a minute. What? It's this number, right? So we're going to follow this. Yeah, see, that's awesome. So, saved. Just little instructions on how to use search plate on database search plate there you go this gives you some information on it now we'll go back to um You can view the exploit code by opening the file at the path shown. I'll discuss exploits more in chapter 9. So in the next chapter, here's the pa path shown. Okay, here's the path shown. And what you can do is you can do that multiple ways, right? Um... So here's the path shown right here. User share exploit database. Or right there. Yeah, so it's exploit database that it so you can search. Yeah. So we'll go, go we can go here. I'm gonna rename this. database that's not how you spell it huh exp with the command is spelled like that <laughs> exp l o i t e x p e x p exp l o i t l o i t but the command is exploit okay i can't spell for crap all right exploit database got some instructions how to do it there you go it's good to have that command in there in my tech box just in case i forget like what I know you can run this on the command line. How do I do it? And then that's how you search it. How much more of this chapter we got? This is a very interesting chapter. And just, you know, want to put it out there. We're probably not gonna probably not gonna run the exercises because they can't be Dangerous and illegal. This is a very touchy chapter. Um, and I don't recommend playing too much with it.
out in the wild or, you know, specifically. Um, but, yeah, I guess let's just keep going. Vulnerability scanners. Searching the vulnerability database for each system com configuration is tedious. Luckily, vulnerability scanners can automatically scan systems and identify any vulnerabilities present. In this section, I'll discuss a commercial solution called Nessus. However, there are also open source ones like OpenVAS and Metasploit's Nexpo scanning module. The Nessus home scanner is free, but is limited to 16 IP addresses. We'll use it to scan your virtual lab environment, open the browser and kind of Linux virtual machine, and download the Nexus scanner for Debian from H. So let's copy. I'm just going to copy this. Okay. Next, open the terminal and go to the folder with the downloaded files. Let's go to um, here. Close that. Use the Debian package management system to install the file by running the following command. So we'll take this and we'll run the following command. Uh, I'm going to have to restart the video here in a second. I'm going to open a terminal here. And we're going to run this command. Pseudo D P K G Yeah, I think I'm just going to copy that name, put it in here. Remember to replace the SS version with the version you downloaded. Next, run the following command. See if that works. Yeah, it goes like this.
So I'm going to copy that. Cancel. Go back here. This is ridiculous to me. Today. Yeah, I mean, you got to think of you got to think of your own way to do things. Oh, uh, really? That's not going to work. Okay, hold on. We'll do it like this. Okay. Remember to replace the nests real quick. Okay, 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 okay. Next, run the following command. Right, let's run this. System. System. CTL. You can access Nessus through your browser. Open Firefox on Kali Linux and enter the following URL to connect to Nessus server that is running on your Kali Linux virtual machine. So what we'll do is we'll go here. Type in Nessus. Type in Nessus. Right. Um, same thing. Instructions. Uh, txt. Enter. And URL Firefox HTTPS. Oh, this is just a local box. Twenty seven zero down zero down one Three, four. Leave that. Let's go here. Copy. Paste. Sit. There's NASA's. You should see a security warning. This is because the server is using a self signed certificate, like the one we generated in Chapter 6, and your browser is unable to verify the certificate with the PKI. Don't worry, the certificate is safe. You can add an exception in the browser. Click Advanced, Set Risk. Start all the devices on your virtual lab and run the Net Discover tool. To get IP addresses of all your machines, start all of them. 
This is gonna be fun. So I gotta start my Ubuntu too. Man, we might start doing the Ubuntu. In the same when are we gonna start using the Ubuntu? Uh, we haven't uh, done anything with the Ubuntu virtual box. All right, I'm good, got everything running. All right, start all the devices to get the IP address your machine. I should put these commands in there, but I don't know what that if I need to, but all right, let's run a net discover. So I've got the my three devices, you know, my firewall, my uh, Ubuntu, and the Meta Splitable. Next in Nessus, click All Scans tab. Managed by Tenable. I have no clue. Run this. This doesn't. Okay. In next in Nessus, click All Scans tab and then New Scans button to create your first scan. Here you can also see all the scans you performed in Nessus. Figure eight thirteen. Figure eighteen lists all available scans.
fill out the information for your scan. We'll limit this to just metasplitable machines. So, so add its IP address to the list of hosts. Remember, you can log into the metasplitable machine using the username and then run the error command. Okay. Settings, general metasplitable machine scan target. Launch the scan. When the scan completes, kick the vulnerabilities. Huh. I like that. Okay, let's. So this is obviously a different version. It's obviously a different version or something. Welcome to Nessus. You can click settings to configure the Nessus proxy. Plugin feeds and encryption password settings before you start the installation. Or you can select register offline to configure an offline installation. Ready, click continue to proceed with installation. Choose how you want to deploy Nessus. Set up a pur purchase. Start a trial. Start a trial. Register for Nessus Essentials. The free version of Nessus for educators, students, and hobbyists. Okay, let me register all this real quick. Uh, man, I'm gonna have to pause this. Or maybe, yeah, I'm gonna pause and then I'll come back when it's retro. All right, finally that's done. All right, so next and next is Okay, type new scan, create your first in here, you can see all the scans performed. Fill out the information for your scan, we'll limit just to the metasplitable, so add its IP address to the list of hosts, remember you can log in, launch the scan, so we'll name it, give it a description, scan folder, target right there. Right. New scan. What did it say? What did it do? That's pretty cool. All scan. All scans. New scan. I'm just going to put basic network scan. Maybe it was a uh, vulnerability scan, malware scan. Yeah, it's just going to be this one here basic network scan name. Splitable. Just a love machine. All right, now we're going to go to the I know this is the metasplitable right here. Why did they have me do the Ubuntu? Ubuntu!
If it's not gonna fucking, if it's not gonna let me do it. Launch. Is it scanning? It's running. It's running, it's running, it's running. Ubuntu. It's running, it's running, it's running. Make sure we uh, did this right. Yeah, you just put the IP address in there. Oh, yeah, it tells you all kinds of stuff. Notice that the scan detected a back door. This is the same back door we exploited earlier. Once a hacker has identified this vulnerability, they could execute the attack discussed in Chapter 1 and gain blue shell access to the machine. Man, I like Nessus. Well, that scanny will read. <clears throat> Explore other OSINT tools by attempting the following exercise. I've ordered the exercise by increasing difficulty by increasing difficulty. In the first exercise, you'll use Nmap to collect information about a server by performing different Nmap scans. In the second exercise, you'll use the Discover tool to run multiple OSINT tools and aggregate the result into a single report. In the third and final exercise, you'll write your own OSINT tool that will retrieve an administrator's email address from the WHOIS database and check a leaked password list to see if it contains a plain text password entry and map scans so this actually gives you the end map scans we already know how to use end map Huh. We might have to run these. This actually gives you... Oh, we might have to do these on another video. I think we can do all these. So this is a discover. to do these uh, oh crap Wait. Oh. press the wrong button yeah we're, we're definitely gonna run the same map scan and we're going to do the discover. But we're not going to do all the excess. You guys can put it together in your own brain. I'm sure you can figure it out. But let's... Um, 
Man, that's still scanning. I think I ever logged into my Metasploitable. I guess I can put a bunch of different IPs and scan them all at once. That's pretty cool. I wonder how long this is going to take. Meantime. Let that scan. We can run this end map. So what I can do actually is go here. I think I have an end map. End map notes. Add more notes. Go here. I've listed some sample MF scans in the code that follows. The first scan uses the HTTP enum script in Nmap to enumerate the files and folders on a website. This is a great way to discover hidden files or directories. Pseudo, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna type this in and run it. So this is gonna be uh, Nmap. Minus little s big B, which is the version. Minus P, which is port 80, I guess. And we're going to run the script. Yes, HTTP enum. IP address That's it Then I'm going to say enumerate through This one and map. 
A S B E equal IP one to call IP two. What in detection? Enum script. Then let's see if we have a scan that's done. Oh, you just unplugged my Mr. Poe. So I guess if you click on it, it's still scanning. Ah. Um. Right here is the one we use the bind shell backdoor detection. directly if the remote host has been compromised we install it up following yeah does it tell you how to do it I don't know, we'd have to mess with this a little bit more. Here's your vulnerabilities. Tells you um, how bad they are. I 
So back to my scans. Let's stop that scan. I guess we could click on this and it Yeah, you can still check. What is this? Back. Back door. There's the solution. But where, how do you exploit it? Does it not tell you how to exploit it? It just tells you. So you gotta like Google this backdoor detection. It's pretty cool. Um, we're not gonna run those end map scans. You can run them. Um, they're pretty cool. I've ran them before. So we can actually come here and go to um, and uh, users share. So I can't do it. Go to users. Uh, user. Share. End map. In map, go to end map and scripts. So we can't even go back, copy this scripts, get out of there, go to hack the file, go to end map notes paste scripts in there so now I could just come in here and run up run those commands so I could come here open terminal let's do sudo and map minus s v because we want the version I want to run scripts. We want to run a script, and the script is going to be bong. Uh, yeah, it's going to have to be. Just paste them in here like that, and then you can. Oh, I might have messed up. Yeah, that's fine. We know that there's always an instructions in here somewhere. I could have just went in scripts. Yeah, that's going to be confusing. Oh, uh, man, let me. Uh, let's do it like this.
We would just open a terminal here real quick instead of and I can run script Exploitable. And then uh, that's it. Let's see if that works. We supply the vulner script, which scans a machine and lists the CVE vulnerabilities it detects. You can find a complete list of nmap scripts currently installed in kind of Linux box. Already did that. And lastly, try a scan of all common ports. P using the default script SC, and, and the output results in a format of a normal format to a file called scan results. So we can even output this. So. And this listed all the vulnerabilities of the middle splitable. That's cool. You can just run it on net net uh and map. So we'll do and map minus s because we want the version minus s c which is the using default script or actually it's common port whatever P I don't know that's the common port default scripts is SC and then we'll do an output I guess that's ON I'll put that to scan results. Dot and map. And then we'll do the same IP. And it'll pump out in scripts. It'll pump out the uh, the lastly we try a scan of all common ports using the default script and I'll put the results I don't know you can do that with the end map While that's scanning, we'll keep going. It's going to be a long video. I want to hurry up and get this chapter over. So, Discover. Discover is an open source tool that contains various scripts to automate the OSINT and vulnerability scanning process. After you scan has complete, Discover will generate a report with the information it has found, as shown in figure, uh, whatever, 816. Discover includes two OSINT scanning tool categories, passive and active. The key difference between these is your likely, the likelihood of being detected. Passive scans query records held by third parties, so victims are unlikely to know they're being scanned. Active scans probe the victim's infrastructure and are more likely to be triggered an alarm. Begin by examining some of Discover's passive scanning tools. Aaron and who is identify IP addresses the American registry internet numbers is organized by the administrative IP addresses and ho and host the who is database uh, DNS recon collects OSINT from DNS servers Goofle, Goofile 
searches a domain for specific file types. The harvester searches public sources on the internet, such as Google and LinkedIn, for email addresses that are associated with domain under investigation. That's a good one. Metasploit scanning tool performs scans with the Metasploit framework. <coughs> URL crazy checks the URL variations that could be used for squatting, like Facebook.com, Facebook.com. Examples we consider in Chapter 7. Recon NG contains a variety of tools, especially for web based open source reconnaissance. The following are some active scanning tools Traceroute sends ICMP. What web? Probes a website to uncover the technology used to build it. You don't have to run these tools individually. The Discover tool will execute them for you and generate a comprehensive report. Oh my gosh. Run the following command to clone the Discover repository. Place it in the op dictionary in Kali Linux virtual machine. This directory contains any Linux programs you install. Run the following command to clone the Discover repository. All right, let's run that. I think I want that tool also. All right. So, then you guys can like um, pause it or whatnot. If you guys want this tool too, you can Google it. By now, you're starting to figure out what you have to do. Um, hopefully, by now, you guys are like, like starting to be able to use your own brains and figure out what you got to do to get it done, what you got to do to to uh, get everything done. to discover remote not found fatal repository HTTPS get a remote not found well, let's look through it again get clone HTTPS backslash backslash github.com slash e-l-e-e -E. B A I R D L E R D Discover D I S Opt Discover Not found. Navigate to the directory containing the repository and run the update. Where is that at? Let's open that link. That link ain't gonna open. Page not found. Just close this.
Oh, look, this is right there. What we can do is we can do this. Go here. And see what what um, works. See if that even works. It does. Then the next one is going to be discover. And then the next one's going to be opt. We ain't got opt no more. Let's see if we can go to art. Oh. Gotta sign in to get her. This wants us to uh, discover. <laughs> Here's Discover.
updating the SH. Copy this, put this over here. Oh, damn! So I like delete everything, get you? I fucking did. Oh, part, part of my French. I deleted everything. Shit, we don't want to do that. And I almost deleted everything. Crazy. Okay, now what did I just do? Oh, I just discovered it right here. So, this is going to take a minute. It's updating. I want that tool because it has apparently everything in it, and then I'll mess with it for a second. So this had us go into opt and discover. I don't know. That was an outdated uh, directory. But I just downloaded discover with uh, get it. Get clone. Because that it worked up to there. Then I went into the directory and I updated it like it says here. There's supposed to be a space right here. See little typos like that um, bother me. Because somebody will do that and go, it's not working, you know, not know how it works. But you know, there should be a space right here, or else this pseudo ain't gonna work. I don't know. During the installation process, you'll be asked to enter information to create a certificate. Remember that you don't need to use uh, your private information, just something you did. Installation process will take some time. Create a folder called results in your Kali desktop, but we're going to put it in our other one. Run discover by running that .sh file. As practice, select the domain option from recon menu. Run both passive and active domains that you own or have acquired permission to scan. The scan can take more than an hour to complete. Discover should output the results of the scan to the folder root data. Move this move this to your results folder for easy access to running the file. 
by running the following commands. So we have to run this. And then you can write your own old set tool. How much of the web can you pawn on your own? Write a scanner that does who is look up on any of the 4 billion IP addresses. It's okay to check all IP addresses given you aren't connected to the IP address. Instead, you're looking at admin's information. Oh, yeah, because who is is okay. In other words, you should be able to run who is and extract as many email addresses as you can find and use the API. I've already got that. To see if the ministry email was associated with the password lead. Well, limit your scan to only a couple addresses. Check the leak database containing one of the four billion email addresses passwords downloaded earlier. So you can pause all this and then read it, write it down, whatever. Do the, all this yourself. Run through the collection IP addresses, output stations. I mean, this would be a fun exercise to do by yourself. I'm not going to do it. I have all the tools. That's very easy. I mean, this is self-explanatory. It's giving you uh, everything you need to do that. That's pretty cool. I would probably only use the Discover tool. It's got everything. But the scan takes forever. So we're going to change this. Right, move root. It says, he says this is root data. Root data. And that takes forever. We we'll have to pause this video, but let's make the uh, root data. There's any roots in here yet? Yeah, root. Permission denied. Permission denied, man. Where is it? What is it? Where? <sighs> Ooh, data. Really? What? 
What? Not sure. I'm tripping or something. Anyways. <laughs> oh man, I missed something up. Where's the damn book at? Yeah, I didn't see no damn root data in there. Man, this is taking forever. Anyways, we're gonna let that run. Um, when it's done, I think it creates that data in there. In there, I don't know. I'll find the data folder that it's having me look for. I mean. So in root, there's going to be a data folder. Yeah. So when I run the scan, it'll create that data in root. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move that root to uh, move this folder to your results folder. I'm just going to put it in there. Um, that's it. That was a long, wonderful chapter. I learned a lot. I know you guys learned a lot. Um, man, I can't even. I'm kind of tired now. Had a rough night last night, but we got through this. And you guys can do these bonuses. Pause it. You know, we went through everything else, made notes, and. I learned a hell of a lot in this chapter. This is an awesome chapter. But now we're going to the next one, Exploitation. I'm going to do some fuzzing for zero day vulnerabilities. I'm probably going to use all that stuff from the last chapter to find some vulnerabilities and hack, hack some stuff. So, yeah, let's see, go to the heartbeat. Yeah. Heartbleed and the openness that we were talking about this. So we're going to do this next chapter. It's going to be fun. Um, 
hopefully um, we have the yeah we've got all the thank god we got all the apps right here I mean the scripts right here so we don't have to write them ourselves but we're almost done with this whole book man that's an awesome achievement so we're more than halfway done there's only 13 chapters we're in chapter 9 already so four more chapters after 9 we're done with this book and I can honestly say I learned a tremendous um, amount of knowledge from it um, now I knew of all this stuff and I've ran scans before but this really runs you through the ringer and gives you the ex like the experience you need uh, repetitive over and over again running in the map running net discover learning about tools uh, learning how to install them learning how to run them you know what I mean and uh, you can go deeper in all this stuff but for now there you go so that's done up to the locate database discover so I'm in discover now and we're not gonna have to we don't have to run this but let me go look to see if um, uh, desktop what was that and I can't get in the room but I haven't ran a scan yet so we'll do that discover um, you guys should run that discover if you figure it out but I'm not gonna run it it's got all kinds of stuff it's in there I can figure out how to run it later this is a very long video um, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time on hack the file